Good morning, cello students. We're going to review the unpacking of your instrument, and then we're going to move right into how we should be sitting and then placement of our left hand on the cello, okay? So one hand on the case, one hand on the neck. You're going to turn your cello around so it's facing away from you this way, okay, off to your left. Um, depending on your case, you'll figure it out. What's the first thing we do when we unpack our cello? We take the bow out, okay? So wherever the bow is in your case, open it up, pull it out, and put it beside the left side of your chair. Okay, we're gonna be working with the bow in a couple of more weeks, so for now we just leave it there safely against the chair. Now you can unzip your case. Most cases have two zippers, one to go down, one around the top. Just pull it all the way up. Open the cello case up. Reach in, grab the neck, grab the bottom, work it backwards. With the cello on your lap, just scoot your case away and then lower your cello to the ground. Hold in the neck, work it around the side of the chair. Notice that I have not been trying to pick the cello up high. I haven't tried to do anything. I'm certainly not on my lap without touching it because we had a cello fall the other day. So be careful. Always hold the neck. I'm going to put this beside my chair. And I'm going to move my case out of the way. Okay. If you need to get uh, anything else out of your case, your book or... Uh, there's a little round donut I'll show you later, then that's something that you want to get out now. Once you have that, put your case out of the way. Okay, now we're going to pick up our instrument again and we're going to get ready to play. One hand on the body, one hand on the neck. Hold the instrument up. Turn it so it's facing away from you, so you can see how I have it. The back is to me. I'm going to take my hand and slip it underneath this part of the cello, and I'm going to lift it up on my left lap. You want the scroll facing off to your left, and you want the end pin to your right. One hand on the neck, always. Other hand, turn the screw towards the cello, pull the end pin out. Now, I've noticed in class a lot of students need to pull the end pin out quite far. Um, one cello, the end pin comes completely out. So if it does that, just be very careful you don't lose your end pin. Just loosen it enough to pull it out and then retighten. For some of you, one and a half hand widths. Some of you need two. So you're much bigger than I expected. So pull the end pin out to the desired length for you. And you'll know that by the way it sits with you. So I still have my hand on the neck. I'm going to switch it underneath. I'm going to lower the cello down. And now I have the cello in front of me. All right. So notice I have this peg. This is the C peg. Lines up with the C string behind my ear. The neck is just off of my shoulder. The cello is resting against my side. And it's running up this way on my body and sloped away from me. Okay. I don't have the cello way up high in front of me because I can't reach around it. Remember how we do pizzicato? With our right hand, thumb, first finger, roll forward and put it just beside the fingerboard. We don't want to be too low and we don't want to be too high. Now on page four and five in your book, you want to review your D and A string. Your D string is the second one in from the left, which is the A string. So your strings, of course, are C, G, D, and A. We are going to be working on these two strings over here. So wherever your hand is here on the fingerboard, you're on the opposite side. And this is why I want you to roll your hand forward so that your pinky is on top and you can reach across the instrument. Okay, if you're like this, it's really hard to reach across. So raise that elbow up. Just review your A string and D string. Try not to keep your hand here. Rest it here. Look at those notes on your page. D string is the middle line in your staff, the five lines. It's the middle line, and then the top line is your A string, okay? So practice those on four and five. Now, let's talk about your left hand. All right, I'm gonna scoot over just a little bit. All right, so when I talk about your left hand, we talk about the shape we want it to be, nice and relaxed, okay? If you were to put your hand out in front of you, the fingers curled up a little bit, not in the fist, but not flat, just let them relax. Hold that hand up and look at 
you can sort of talk about how we said it was like a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll or a glass you're reaching for, your thumb is just bent a little bit, your fingers are nicely curled around. That's the shape we want for the neck on the cello, okay? We don't want flat fingers. We don't want thumbs peeking around the other side, okay? The violins, we let do that because they have to do what they do for their instrument. For you, though, your thumb goes behind the neck, okay? It goes behind. Don't let it creep around behind the neck. Now, before we get on the instrument, I want you to take your thumb and just touch the second finger, all right? On the fingerboard, you're going to be looking to line up the thumb and second finger so that they're opposite each other. Somewhere in this area here, okay? The other thing you want to know about is what do I do with this arm? I don't keep it down here because this is what we end up with. We joke about it in class. It's this horrible creature. But I do want to make it clear. This, very comfortable. This, very uncomfortable. There's a lot of pain in here. So if you're doing this, you're going to cause a lot of aches and pains. This does not look comfortable. Loosen your arm, shake it out. Reach out your left arm. Make that C shape by touching the second finger, okay? And then just from the elbow, come back to the cello. All right, now you're gonna practice this several times. I can do this with my cello that I perform with. I don't have tapes, and I always end up in the same place. It's called muscle memory. You're gonna remember where your arm goes if you do it enough times. You won't even have to look and in fact, over time, we remove these tapes because your fingers know exactly where to go. Plus, you're listening when you play. So this is all very relaxed. Come back. Don't let your elbow drop. Don't put it way up in the air. That doesn't feel very natural either. Just this, okay? Now, how far apart do my fingers go? Well, usually we say there's a finger width. Okay, so you can take your first finger, or you can take all your fingers and stick them through if you want, but take your first finger of your right hand and just space out those fingers, okay? Notice that my fingers are all standing up on their fingertips. They're not flat, all right? If I do flat, then I end up with a thumb creeping around. The other thing I'm not doing is this. I'm going to take my hand right off the cello as if it was like this. Look at my thumb. Everything's flat and crushed. And this is really tight. Yours will be too. Relax. Tight. Hurts. Relax. Okay. If you keep this nice bent thumb, then you're going to stay nice and relaxed in here and soft and it'll be very comfortable. This is no different than grabbing a glass of water. Okay. So you just gently grab a glass of water, put your hand on the cello. That's the same thing. Same shape. Okay, it's much easier in the violins, so practice this so you don't have to fuss with it too much. Notice that I have a straight line running right down to my elbow. I don't have this bend. And I also or don't overcompensate by bending my wrist this way. That hurts just as much and is not at all good. Okay, so let's take our hands off. Relax. Now we're going to focus on the D string. If you're not sure which it is, play it. Then you're gonna bring your left hand over and you're gonna put it on the cello. You can glance down. I don't want you pushing your cello away to look because that just causes extra pain and this is not how we play. Looks like you're having a fight with your cello. Not a bad idea to have a mirror, okay? I have the phone on right now and I can see myself back with it very easily. If you're in front of a mirror, you can see that your feet are flat on the floor, your knees are bent, and you have a nice, comfortable posture. Left hand on the cello. Now, this tape, closest to the pegs we talked about in class. That's for your first finger. This tape, which is closest to the body, is for your fourth finger. The two other fingers are gonna fall in between. Now, for you, it's really important that you get in the habit of pressing, press, press down, don't squeeze, because if you do, you'll be pressuring from the back with your thumb. And we don't want that. We want the thumb to be very relaxed. You want to do this. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just as I showed in class, put your arm across you, your right arm across, bring your thumb, put it on the back of your wrist, behind your wrist, and bring your fingers around to the front and press in. Just feel that pressure. Just press in. You can even release your thumb a little bit. Just let it come off a little bit so that you can feel the pressure. And that's what we want. We want to press 
fingers are bent over nicely. You can see your fingernails when you're looking down at your fingerboard and everything is nicely spaced out. All right, you're gonna practice this for several times and try to land on the D string. Try to take your hand off, get your fingers set up, thumbs behind the neck, nice and round and bent, no squeezing. You'll practice that on you for quite a while, okay? Then we're gonna move into the next video to actually play the notes on the D string. Good luck.